What's going on out there, YouTubers, DIYers, mechanics, technicians, certified knuckle draggers? This video is to show you how to fix, uh, at least temporarily anyways, the dreaded high beams are turning on with the right turn signal. From what I'm told, this is a super common problem on these GMCs. This is a Yukon of the 2004 variety. And as you can see, I'm in here in the dash. Let's see, I've got the lights on. Uh, whoa, what's happening to my focus there? Come on, come on camera, there we go. Okay, so if I got the lights on, do the right turn signal and you can see the indicator for the high beam turn on. And let me see if I can capture this, even a, let's see, my messy grill there. Let's see if I turn off, see you can kind of see the high beams and the low beams switching on and off. Of course, that does annoy a lot of people, maybe even illegal in some areas, etc., etc. So I did want to replicate the problem, uh, just so um, yeah, if you have the exact same model, GMC, Chevy, etc., this is probably going to be a good fix for you. Okay, this is what the fuse panel in this GMC looks like. Uh, it has the 4.8 liter engine. Um, if your fuse panel slash relay control box does not look like this, you're not because I am going to show you how to replicate what I did with a simple test light and these are super super cheap at Harbor Freight you do not need a high-tech fancy one just a basic test light will work so, um, so what I did is I came here to my fuse panel and I located the relays for the high beams and the relay for the low beams that's these two right here um, and that's these two guys uh, yes, uh, for those of you that are super observant, there is a relay missing. I did pull that out so I can um, show you guys this video just a little easier. Um, so once you locate exactly which two relays are for high beams and low beams, those are the ones we're going to be test lighting, working with, slash trick wiring. Um, and literally at the, at the end, if you already have a test light or if you already know which one to jump, this is all you need right here to fix this problem um, for... As long as you feel comfortable having the fix. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna pull my relays and this one is the high beam and this one is the low beam. Like I said, see your little map or if you already know which one. Now, I picked up my, oh, there, I, there I go dropping the supplies that I was gonna use to. A little training aids there. Now my test like what wasn't quite thin enough to fit in there, um, so I just wrapped a little wire, and that's that's what I used to stick in there to verify which one which one was what. Um, so as you can see, my test light's lighting up. So that one has constant power. This one has constant power. Um, and for those of you wondering, I do have the key in with the with the lights with the accessory on. The engine's not running. Um, and quick disclaimer before I forget, even though I am a mechanic, I am not your mechanic. This video is for educational purposes only. I am not responsible for any damage to your vehicle, improvement in your sex life, etc. Okay, um, bring that up closer so they can see all these four. Can you see all four holes? One, two, three, four. Okay, there we go. Okay, so as you can see, so that one has light. Test lights lighting up. Let me see, I can get that on camera, okay. And this one has power, and these two do not. So I'm going to switch to positive to see which one of these are ground. So, and if I already did these top two, I only need to test the bottom two. So that one has ground, and this one has nothing. So that leads me to believe that this one is going to be the control terminal, if you will, that once you initiate your light switch or the computer says, hey, it's dark enough, go ahead and turn on the lights, this is, this is what will get activated uh, to engage the relay and all that good stuff. Anyways, um, we, and I will show you how to test that here momentarily. Okay, this does work better if you have uh, somebody to assist you, but if not, uh, you know, just set up your rig so that none of your connections drop off so you can go in the cab. Um, so I'm going to have my lovely assistant, not Vanna White, <laughs> um, go ahead and turn on the high beams. And you can see the test light came on. 
High beams off. High beams on. High beams off. And the high beams are not turning on and off because I have pulled the relay. If those connections are severed, your lights should not be coming on. Um, so that does confirm that this is your control one. Now that you have uh, isolated which one is the control one, you do the exact same process for the low beam side, which is right here. And I mean the exact same process. Just go with your test light, see which one, um, uh, see which one has power and which one is the control side. In my case, my test light right here for this one, I did have it up hooked up to the positive side. And that's how I verified the uh, control side. Let's see. See, that one was ground. And it's only this ground that's missing. So that's power, that's power. And over here, on mine, when I did the test light procedure, this one was power, this one was power, and this one was ground. And it was literally the exact same thing. Okay, now the moment of truth, the part that makes everybody nervous. If you feel most comfortable unplugging your negative battery cable, do so at this time. You are going to take the low beam control side, stick enough jumper wire in there to make contact. Uh, actually, it, sh it should make contact with the terminal on the relay. So you sh really, in actuality, you shouldn't need a lot. So just stick enough in there. Uh, try to use some thinner gauge wire because if you use super, super thick, you're gonna have trouble um, putting your relay back in place. So slide your relay in. That's nice and tug. Now remember that control wire is on the same tooth of that relay. Now on this one, for the high beam one, you're actually not going to put the relay back in. All you're going to do is put enough of this wire into that terminal where the tooth of the relay would go. And you secure it whatever method you want to use, electrical tape, if you want to solder, because this is going to be semi-permanent for you. Um, me, I just, I use more than enough extra wire to make sure that if it does jiggle and wiggle and all that during the drive, there's more than enough wire that it's not going to come pop out. Now, before I put everything back together, I'm going to demonstrate for you the fix. So, as you can see right now, we have regular lights again, because we put in that relay. And I will have my lovely assistant climb back in the vehicle, so we can demonstrate this out here live. And you can actually see the turn signal in action. Okay, go ahead and turn on the right turn signal, please. That would be the left. Can we do the other left, the other right? There we go, there's the right. Okay, you can see the right turn signal. Okay, left turn signal. Okay, can you do high beams? And as you can see, most of these trucks won't even flicker. The truck didn't even miss a beat. The truck thinks it's switching to high beams, but it's actually switching from low beam to low beam. So you're never blinding anybody and you never lose your regular headlights. Let me show you this inside the cab. So as you can see, I have the regular lights on. And you can see, okay, so there we go. High beam's off. And so even though that high beam indicator's coming on, my regular headlights are still on. And so I'll come out here, try to show you that as I try to activate and I can try to get everything on screen here. Here we go, right turn signal. But you can see my lights did not change. I know, isn't that amazing? Okay. Now, as we all know, the true, true fix is to replace your um, turn signal switch. That is the most common culprit that causes these problems is this turn signal switch. There are a few YouTube videos out there that um, already have those instructions posted. Um, so if you want to do it the right, right way, uh, that is how you do it. But um, if you're in a bind, uh, budget, whatever the case may be, maybe you're in a country that takes forever and a day to get these parts then uh you know get yourself a jumper wire and you can literally have this uh fixed up uh, with just a simple simple little amount of wire uh anyways always use safety uh if you want to you know get yourself ground strap whatever by all means um if there's anything in this video that i missed that you might find helpful for other technicians uh if you uh, please add it in the comments below so you can help out your uh, all those other technicians um, Maybe any tips tri uh, Tips techniques, maybe anything like that that I missed I'm just putting this here together so that if the customer ever decides They want to replace that turn signal switch Then uh, the relays there and everything's there all I got to do is pull that wire and pop that relay back into place. Oh, there we go. Hello, hello dummy
Okay, uh, leave that stuff in the comments below, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, if there's anything you'd like to see, a teardown or a tutorial on something that I might be able to show you, please leave it in the comments below and I will do what I can to post that video for you. Have a good one.